Hi, this is Kristen from Life of Crafting, and I'll try to keep this steady. I don't have my arm with me for doing the video things. My friend and I um, had seen this um, card on the Velvet Lemon um, site. She made this for the greetery. This was a, a greetery's release that they did for this past Christmas season in 2021. And it really looked cool. It's a shaker, as you can see, with the different stuff in here. And I thought, um, for me personally, I like to make some really nice cards for my personal use. And this was one I felt like I wanted to do that for. And boy, I don't know. I don't know how many more I'm going to make. So in dissecting this card, you actually need the Greeteries Hourglass Frame Die. So this was quite expensive when you added up all the components. It was this die, which cuts out, honestly, it cuts out this outside piece here, the brown. This die here, I, I couldn't figure out what it did, which is why it's still not clipped off. I'm guessing if you wanted to put this on a flat-backed card, this could be the part that you raise, and this would be filling in the inside of the card um, to give you that shaker. I don't know why you would do it, but anyway, that's that one. The second one you need, this is what they call the hourglass insert. There is several, there is four dies in here. The one is the outside line. The other is the inside line. And what that's doing is, this is my version of it. It's cutting out, if you can see this thin one outside here. You need that um, so that you can do the shaker. And then the inside line here is gonna give you this part that's here in the back. So this was a little difficult, like I said. Um, the first thing I did in having to dissect was knowing what to buy. So this was the first one with the hourglass. I could have put any scene inside of there that I may have had, but to me it was gonna be difficult because of the way these trees curved around. The smoke was built to go in this opening here that they put. So I kind of wanted to stay with their stuff. They did a city scene, which is really not me, and I chose to do this is the stamp for the countryside. So they have a country and that's the stamp and then these are the dies. Very difficult to line up. Um, let, me, let me go back to this. She gives almost no help on, the, um, on her blog for this. Um, I, I did not read where she said she used Copic for coloring. I assumed this was all done with Tim Holtz Oxide Distress Inks. Um, so I brought on my trip with me down here for my, I told you I was doing my weekend with my friend Vicki down here. And uh, I only brought Oxide Inks to do this. This was the only card that I did not do prepping for um, ahead of time. So we did the Oxides. This was the first time I ever worked with it and it really was kind of fun. I used the blending brushes that they have where they've got like that round head on them, I, I would reach for them, but I again, I'm walking with a cane right now and I, I don't even know where I put them. So um, I think you know what I'm talking about. Everybody's been using the blending brushes. So um, we did that to make the night sky. And I'm gonna tell you, trying to do what she did with this brown was like, we, we played with trying to get this wood green every which way. I mean, these are just a mess. Um, we're going to do more of these. I'm going to have to figure something else out, but it wound up being we needed four of these because you need one on the front and then you have these. So you needed them on the back and you needed to be doing the front because as you can see, there's all these embossed things. If you try to color it and it's on the flip side, they're not indents. They're all like poking up. So it would constantly catch your blending tool. And that's kind of why I have this like different stuff that just did not turn out correctly. Um, so it was difficult because we also wanted to use um, some of the thinner papers figure and it was a background, but then I needed thicker. Um, we wound up cutting four of these outlines to build this up to, to go the thickness this way because I didn't I heard that the um, foam strips was really difficult to keep the, the shape. 
So we opted to do, I cut four of the Hobby Lobby extra heavyweight cardstock to build this up. Honestly, if I did this again, I think it needs six. Um, the reason having said that was um, by the time we started putting the hillsides in here, that was adding a problem because the um, you've got multiple layers. I, we had to go back to the thin on that because the thick really did not give us anything. As you can see, my stuff is sticking in here. Um, I should not have put these little, like these diamond things because they're too thick. This is the, the sequin mix from them. I should have just stuck with that because it's a much flatter mix. The um, house was a hard stamp because the way they do it is you stamp the house, which is 1A. Then you're supposed to go to the roof line. And I'm going to tell you right now, no matter how we did it, those, those two did not match up. Both of us wound up cutting out a separate um, component for the roof and adding it over top. The windows, again, were not, you could not, the, the ink kept wanting to clog up in them because they're so small. So I wound up just doing the whole thing and this is the brick red color, I forget, something faded brick, something like that. And then I actually, if you can imagine, I, I die cut this out in white and painted them with the some kind of yellow, it's a bright yellow from them. Um, and pieced them back in there. That's like how crazy, like I was obsessed with trying to get this um, correct. So um, the, the glitter was like, honestly, like glitter that was laying in the bottom of a bag for something I prepped down here from another card. So I had like remnants of glitter, but I wanted something bling kind of in there. And I didn't bring any of that with me and I apologize, there's a lot of glare. So some of this, um, I think definitely Copics would have been much better. Trying to get the, the these are very thin. We tried to leave them in the paper. Um, we tried to do the paper coloring first and then die cut, but you just couldn't get the shading. So this is definitely something, it's a beautiful card. We intend to make more. I would do it with Copics. Um, I, I just thought that the oxide stuff in a background and then coloring these laying on top of it would not look the same again I'm not this is my first foray into doing coloring with anything with oxide so what do I know you know um but you had to do this you had to cut these papers at the four and a quarter and score at the five and a half so that you could get the the card to open um I need to get these in the heavyweight I was trying to do these in a, a thinner weight Definitely need them both to be in the heavy way because they just don't. You know, you want to put the card like she's got it and hold it. Yeah, I'm still working on these lovely cards from last night. Trust me, I got 15 left and I'm counting the minutes down. Um, you want to when you want to do that, um, you're really resting on the brown sections and the back one of this is the, the thinner paper and it does not want to hold. It's too flimsy. Um, the front is the heavier where it'll stay, but you know what? Her and I talked about it and we're thinking that we may need to put a, a layer of cardboard in between. Other things to consider was like the, um, the inside of this where I cut it was white, as you can see here. She's got, she didn't color the white of those ones that she stacked up. That's another reason why I didn't want to use foam because you couldn't color it up. I, I actually took a brush and colored it on this on this side of the paper, like on the inside of it, because I'm that anal. And you can still see that um, there's sections in there. And this is my first um, with doing a shaker card. And I'm going to tell you, you definitely, I use the Barely Art Glue. Yeah, I think I would definitely go to that mixed media or whatever it is that Tim Holtz sells. Um, highly recommend a different ink, or I'm not sorry, ink, a different um, glue. This stamp is a third stamp that I did not get initially and didn't until I started preparing this. I was like, oh God, I don't have the one for the sentiment. And again, you could probably find something else, but I'm one of the ones that like, I just, I want to learn it from the person who did it. And then I, then I'll branch out and do like other things on my own with it. Um, so this was the Christmas time sentiments from the greetery. 
I'm gonna tell you, I had a really hard time trying to get the angle of this, it's the wonderful time of the year, to the die, because again, this is another purchase. Um, it's not the same. If you see, like, it's better here. One end bulges out, another end is a different, the other end is totally different. So the, the stamp isn't universal to just flip around either way. So we wound up die cutting this and then stamping it. Same with this, it worked out, it was better to be die cutting it, coloring it, and then piecing it together. So I hope if you were considering this card that this helps you because there really wasn't a lot of any information I could find. Um, the only thing I'll be honest I found that was out there was the one on the Greeteries website and there was a lot of details um, kind of not there. Um, the card that she made here, I actually wondered if it was, um, the acetate looked like it was almost like rounded. I was wondering if there was some kind of an insert that they sold for that and I did not see that. Here's my notes of what I still needed to bring down. Um, but I don't believe there was. I looked, I didn't see any kind of insert. So this is just the flat acetate. So um, if you do find that there was, you know, rounded ones, I think it would look really cute. But like I said, I don't think they sold like molded ones like Tim Holtz has for the, for the oven and the, um, the TV. So if you're wondering what these little, this was a Queen and Company um, that I added in there. They're diamonds. And they're beautiful. They add a lot of bling, but like I said, they, they don't, there's not a lot of shaking going on with this. So that's why I think it needs another, another like two layers to add that up. So hope you get some good information out of this. Um, I'll be honest, the colors I used, use your own. I, there was, it was really hit or miss. There was a lot of, a lot of things we kept redoing because we just, uh, like I said, if I re when I redo this, um, I may make a video at that time so you can see the process. But it took us literally five hours. And I'm going to tell you, I, I, I had this dissected, so I knew what we were doing beforehand. And it still took us five hours to get this together. It's a lot of pieces, a lot of, lot of different parts and components. So really beautiful card. I think I'm going to wind up taking this one and making this probably just an ornament for my tree because I really think it is beautiful. But... Um, you know, like I said, to give it as a card. I, I don't know. I just, I beat myself up too much. So have a nice night. This is my uh, make for today. I'm going to upload this to, um, for the Jill Norwood's uh, Saturday morning make, even though it's not Saturday. I'm, like I said, I'm just trying to enjoy my week here and make some stuff while I'm down here. And I'm hoping that you all enjoy it. If you haven't subscribed to the Life of Crafting, um, channel I would appreciate it I'd like to be able to get to a point where I have my thousand subscribers so we can do some of this stuff live all right have a nice night and I'll see you tomorrow thanks